Hey guys, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Rosa and today we're going to be making some brownies. Yes, I said it, brownies. I'm excited about this today because I've been wanting brownies for so long lately and like my mouth is literally watering by saying the word brownie, okay? <laughs> so you guys are going to come along with me, but first I want to let you know that these ones are gluten-free, they're sugar-free, but most of all, they're delicious and I'm ready. So let's get in this kitchen and get this party started. All right, y'all, let's go, come on. All right, so in the bowl, I grabbed some almond flour and I put two cups, full cups of almond flour in the bowl. Make sure you fill it up, guys, and you can even pack it in. And after that, I grabbed some of our monk fruit sweetener, about a fourth cup of monk fruit sweetener leveled off. Got that in a bowl and then we to make it that chocolatey flavor I like to use the cacao uh, powder chocolate powder so a C-A-C-A-O powder about a fourth cup of that it makes it really rich and it's really it's, it's considered to be a health or a, what you call a superfood guy so definitely get that kind but you can use any type of cocoa powder then I added about a one tablespoon of our baking powder because you want it to get nice and a nice rise on that so I use about one tablespoon because with almond flour guys uh, since there's no gluten in it you want to get a good amount of baking powder in there so it can rise well and then we just whisk it all up together and I like to whisk it really really good because uh, you don't want any like clumps of that baking powder since we use so much in there you don't want that bitterness if you bite into a clump of baking powder I don't know if you ever did that but it's gross so <laughs> we definitely want to mix that up really well and even I kind of like uh, pinched out a little bit of cocoa powder uh, pockets as well so that's all mixed up and nice and well combined and then we're gonna get our uh, wet ingredient so then we add our coconut oil. So uh, it melted because it was so hot that day in the house because <laughs> we live in Vegas. It was extremely hot, so just leaving it out for a little bit, it caused it to melt. And then you'll get yourself some large eggs. Then you'll grab some large eggs, guys, uh, three large eggs. I like to keep them at room temperature. Uh, it's best to do that because it helps for your um, baking to rise even better instead of having cold eggs. We added two teaspoons of vanilla extract just to bump up that flavor. Then I added some brown rice syrup. Now, if you're not familiar with brown rice syrup, it's just brown rice is a healthy alternative. It's brown rice cooked down and it gets really syrupy and sweet. So we add that in it. And you can find that in any uh, health food store, um, probably Whole Foods or even Sprouts. I love shopping at Sprouts as well. So uh, grab that. It causes the brownies to get that ooey gooeyness that, um, that you kind of want in the brownie and that little bit of density. So, and it's sweet. So it tastes so good. So definitely I recommend to get that. You can use honey if you want as an alternative or agave nectar, um, but this one gives it that uh, texture that you're looking for for a brownie. Yeah, so that I use that Sweet Dreams Organic Brown Rice Syrup. Definitely recommend it. However, you can do alternatives, guys. So just play with the recipe and make it your own. So we just whisk that up really well. Get that stirred in. And I like to do, now you can use it uh, um, instead of just using your hands manually <laughs> with the whisk. You definitely can use a hand mixer. It'll make it go faster, but I'm so used to being baked in the baking industry. I'm so used to just doing things by hand a lot of times, you know. And I just think it's, it's just comforting to, you know, stir by hand. It, it's, it's therapeutic to me. So I love baking. If you, you guys from bakers out there, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, get it nice and stirred up. And uh, see how rich and, and creamy that looks? Uh, best believe it's going to taste that good once you bake it up. So go ahead and get that stirred up. So now once we're done getting that nicely stirred and well combined, um, I grabbed an 8 by 8 square baking pan. And what I did was oil a little bit at the bottom and I lined it with some parchment paper so your it'll be easier for you to pull your brownies out and they won't stick uh, that much to the pan. So definitely do that. And then I just added the batter right into the pan and get it nice and smoothed out. Make sure you get every drop. 
drop because you know we ain't trying to leave any behind. So, yep, down to the last drop. <laughs> yep. Then you're just gonna get it nice and smooth and evened out. And I like to make sure it's evened out so that you don't have a corner of your brownie uh, thinner than the rest. So definitely uh, get that evened out, guys. And let's go ahead and get ready for the oven. I set it to 350 degrees. And uh, we're gonna bake this for, I'd say about 30 minutes, guys, but definitely keep an eye on it because uh, once it's baked, you wanna pull it out after that 30 minute mark, check it. I generally have to put it back in for about five more minutes. So um, you just don't want the center to be loose. You want everything to be solidified, but not too dry. So give it that time. And once it comes out of the oven, it should look like this. Nice, uh, firm, but uh, it'll have a little bit of that, um, I don't know, kind of like gooeyness to it. It's hard to explain, but see what I mean? It'll be kind of solidified, a good rise on the sides, and, and nice and soft in the center. This the way I like my brownies to be. Now, however, you can cook it a little longer if you want more of a solid brownie, or you can cook it a little bit less if you want your brownie to have a more ooey gooeyness, you know. So it's up to you, but I definitely suggest at least between the 25 and 30 minute mark. And we're just going to cut it all up and go ahead and plate it. Be sure to use a spatula to get it scooped out because it will stick we'll see how it's nice and moist and gooey see nice and moist now you could again you can make it gooier by cooking a little bit less but i like it just like that it's just perfect right there and my hubby likes it that way too so and, but he also loves to have his favorite ice cream from trader joe's it's a soy cream based ice cream and it's delicious uh, it's it's like the perfect sweetness and the creamy richness in that soy ice cream you know, I, uh, uh, that's just a favorite of his. Uh, yeah, it got stuck. <laughs> I was trying to make it pretty, but it got kind of stuck. But there you go. It looks good to me. Doesn't matter as long as it tastes delicious, guys, right? <laughs> yep, it was delicious. So good. And rich. Look at that. The perfect brownie. You definitely got to make these ones because you will not regret it. It's gluten-free and it's totally delicious, guys. So make this next time uh, for your family and enjoy. So if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, guys. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below. Let me know if you made this recipe and um, share it on our IG channel, Rosa the Sweet Chef as well, and tag me. So until next time, guys, happy cooking and have a great day. Bye.